In February, China's foreign ministry published a 4,000-word analysis titled U.S. Hegemony and Its Perils. It was an indictment of alleged U.S. foreign interference, intimidation, and interventions that began 200 years ago. Uh, to help us unpack the U.S.-China tensions and where South Africa also is being caught up, we're joined by the international relations expert, Professor John Stremlau. Prof, thank you so much uh, for making time for us. So President Xi Jinping accused the U.S. recently of pursuing an unprecedented global policy to contain and suppress Chinese development. How has the U.S. responded since? Well, the response has been fairly low key because there was the, and there is a desire on the part of the, the ministry, if you take them at their words, which is to uh, dampen down this um, uh, tension between the U.S. and China. Meanwhile, uh, uh, making sure that um, technological competition is uh, won by the United States. So what I was trying to do was to draw a distinction in the first instance between the old Cold War, which was principally a military confrontation between uh, the Soviet Union and the United States, but secondly, to talk about African agency, because I'm of the belief that neither superpower economically, China and the U.S., uh, wants to get into a too, too, too much of a contest within Africa, but to be responsive to African uh, uh, aspirations and wishes because it suits their both in very, very well to have a partnership with African uh, nations. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. has a huge diaspora population, and the Chinese are a eager to, 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 to help in, uh, develop infrastructure here. Yeah. So that was the, the twofold objective. Yeah, and, and I mean, the, the recent U.S. shooting down of that alleged Chinese spy balloon really must have escalated tensions. So where do we get involved then, uh, Prof, as South Africa and, and, and maybe even the continent at large? How do we avoid being entangled in this U.S.-China global rivalry while also maintaining productive partnerships with both nations? Well, I think this should be a sub of debate, and uh, unfortunately, I don't see any uh, leadership nation stepping forward the way South Africa did at the time of the uh, conversion of the o OAU to the African Union and the um, uh, NEPAD and the, and the uh, peer review process. All of the things which in encourage African agency and uh, collaboration for dealing with this rivalry, but. Nevertheless, I did try to show by citing each of the headings of hegemony, the indictments that, the, that the Xi Jinping had issued against the, the Americans, to look at from an African perspective, actually <clears throat> China and the U.S. have been very productive partners with African nations, and this should be at all costs continued. Yes, they will have differences over uh, Ukraine. Yes, they will have differences over Taiwan. But for Africa, it's important to take advantage of both engagements of the U.S. and of, of China. And I think that can be managed, at least I hope so. Mm. These, th there are fears out there, Prof, that you know, the, the escalating U.S.-China tensions might threaten the independence of the African continent and, and perhaps even non-aligned nations. Is that concern valid? Well, I, I wrote an earlier piece about non-alignment and I'm suspicious about what that means because it's too vague. But in fact, um, I don't see um, the uh, Africa being a playground for the uh, c c c competitors, the uh, elephants dancing and the grass getting trampled. I think the grass is much stronger than that. But <clears throat> I am concerned about the Ukraine impact down here, the war, and also from a South African standpoint, it's going to host the BRICS in August. And whether or not um, uh, Putin shows up, if he does, that's going to be a dilemma yeah. regarding the, uh, the International Criminal Court. But um, on the Chinese front, 
Uh, I think the Chinese are going to uh, tread rather gingerly in Africa, at least in terms of winning over the support of African uh, governments. And the Biden administration, never mind the Trump administration, he could return and then this is all a, a pointless conversation we're having. But if the Biden administration continues, they've made already 18 uh, senior officials to Africa in the yeah. last year, and they're eager to build partnerships. And, and what do you <laughs> think is behind that? Uh, are we seeing a change in international relations on the continent? I mean, we've been attracting a lot of diplomatic attention of late. I mean, all this attention from the global players, not only senior um, ministers in Russia, but China as well. The U.S. has been bringing uh, their, their senior uh, you know, leaders as well. How are you reading this? Are we becoming a significant international player? The, the, you, you've got to separate the United States from other powers. Mm. The United States has a huge diaspora population, which is very pro-democratic in the capital D. That, that is to say, that's a crucial constituency for Joe Biden. And so, therefore, he is trying to reinforce the, the uh, support by showing that he cares uh, much more than the Republicans do about the future of Africa. He just appointed uh, the head of the biggest senior, the biggest the single health program ever undertaken by a, a, a single power, namely PEPFAR, uh, which is now in its 20th anniversary. And he, he, he appointed a, a head of it who is a Cameroonian uh, birth, but a naturalized American. And he's a very distinguished scientist, and he's um, going to do, I think, a splendid job. But it's a symptom, again, of... Biden trying to show that the diaspora really, really matters for American democracy and American effectiveness and American partnerships with Africa. And I mean, I can't remember the last time, Prof, the continent was taken so seriously. Um, uh, is there a worry at all from the part of the U.S. about the prevalence of China and Russia on the continent? Is it fair to say that the U.S. is feeling a little threatened? No, it's not. I don't think so. It may be the case uh, uh, in, in, in other parts of the world, like, like the South China Sea yeah. uh, and China. But in the Africa, no. This is largely domestically driven. Just think of the differences between Donald Trump, the racist, and, and Joe Biden, the inclusionist. Uh, Joe Biden wants America to look more like South Africa. Uh, that is to say, a country that belongs to all who live there. And so, therefore, they're behaving very differently than the Trump administration, uh, and I think would be behaving differently than if, mm -hmm. if uh, one of the Republican candidates who's vying for election in 2024 mm -hmm. was to win. So Africa has a stake in who wins the election in the United States, but the other powers have other agendas, and that's fine. They, they, except if, if the, the, the Russians really are, are, are troublemakers on the continent, in my view, mm. but the Chinese are very constructive. Yeah, I mean, but we have done things, though, that haven't made the U.S. particularly happy. I saw that in the House of Representatives was actually considering um, looking at a resolution for President Joe Biden's administration to review the U.S. relations with South Africa over Pretoria's decision to host these military exercises that, that we did with China and Russia. And, and I guess it doesn't help that as South Africa, we declined to participate in the Cutlass Express military exercises with the U.S. this year. And the government didn't explain why it declined uh, to participate. And I'm just wondering if all of this is somehow threatening our relations. Oh, Professor uh, Stremlo, I think the uh, network really, really not, not helping us there, but he's just been joining us uh, to discuss the U.S.-China relations and how South Africa or even the continent at large is, is being caught um, in the middle of all of that. Now, it remains to be, okay, I'm told that we've got the prof back. Prof, um, apologies there. Uh, your connection to us was interrupted, but you were just about to respond to the question I asked. Yes, and I just said that when mm. uh, that the U.S. Uh, officials so far 
have been clear that they are not happy with the South African position, mm. but it's not a determining factor in the relationship, which has many dimensions and is very complex and is therefore worth preserving because South Africa still is a democracy which tolerates free speech, uh, a judicial system that works much better than the United States system in many ways, at least at the highest levels. It's less politicized, more independent. So I, I think that, um, uh, as the Deputy Secretary of State said when she was here, Wendy Sherman, uh, we wish that um, the, the U.S. had a constitutional protection for the women's right to choose. Uh, there are plenty of things that, that mm -hmm. Americans can learn from South Africa, and I think the Biden administration has, has made that plain. However, um, there, there is a concern now that the British Petroleum has cut uh, aviation flu fuel to, to uh, South Africa because of the uh, Ukraine sanctions mm. and uh, violation of those sanctions in, in that view. So it's a complex world. All right. Uh, thank you for making time for us. Professor Jonas Stremler, international relations expert.